Yay. All right, here we are. Welcome, everybody. It's Friday Night Comics here at SAW, or the Sequential Workshop, Sequential Artist Workshop. Um, it might be Friday morning where you are. It might be super early Saturday morning where you are. It might be Friday afternoon where you are. Anyway, here where we are located, it's Friday night, and that's what we've called this for the longest time. But we're glad that this is global, and we're glad there's so many people here in whatever time frame you're in. So thank you for being here. Uh, this is the Sequential Artists Workshop. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. We have lots of online courses that you can take. If you go to learn.sawcomics.org, you'll see more about what, what we do and how we help people learn comics. Um, let's see. Uh, coming soon, for instance, uh, we have some courses. I'll tell you about that in the next slide. But this week, in this slot next week, Friday night, we have Liz Yerby. She's going to be, or they're going to be teaching us uh, accessing your inner anxious child through Peanuts fan art, which I'm sure is going to be awesome. Um, uh, coming up soon at SAW, if you want are, and are interested in the hidden history of comics, which looks a lot at distribution and the history of art making and who hasn't been allowed to make comics or who hasn't been allowed to be seen making comics and, and really dives into like how to change that. It's a really great course. Bootlegger's Guide to Freelancing is starting in March with Jess Rolofson. Ayani Cooper is going to be walking people through Emily Carroll's work and creative nonfiction with Marine Burdock. A bunch of things coming up. Uh, and in addition, our six-month graphic novel development course starts in June. Um, hopefully, you'll be hearing some more about that. And if you have a big project in you, that's that's the course to take. Um, meanwhile, Jess Rolofson and I have been doing a podcast called The Terrible Anvil about, not, about making comics and not feeling bad. And uh, the latest episode was episode eight called Monetizing Every Moment of Waking Existence on Instagram, What Could Go Wrong? So if you're interested in that, uh, click on over. Look, just Google ter Terrible Anvil or in your podcast feed and stuff like that, and you'll find it. So cool. Anyway, what survive, What we do instead of monetizing everything on Instagram is we survive from tuitions and donations and things. So I want to thank everybody who donated to this workshop, helps pay the artists and helps keep these free for you all. Um, you can donate at PayPal, Patreon, other ways. You can become a sustaining member. There's That's on the website, learn.sawcomics.org. Okay, so we'll get started. Uh, please, no inappropriate speech or imagery. We keep everything PG-13, at least when we're sharing. What you do in your notebooks is up to you. Uh, share what you do on social media, hashtag Friday Night Comics. You can tag us at Comics Workshop. I'll put Sanika's in the chat. I think it's Jackfruit uh, Slayer. It's <laughs> the Jackfruit Slayer. Yeah, I came awesome. with him with 14. It was... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's great. Anyway, that'll be in the chat. Uh, and also you can share things at members.sawcomics.org. And also you can see what's happening a little bit at Seesaw Comics, where we have been doing weekly PDFs of, of work from these workshops. Um, so if you go look for that icon there at Seesaw Comics, you'll see um, some of the PDFs we've done, including last week's memory chairs with Audra Stang. It, it looks like that a little bit. We're really happy to be uh, featuring some of this work. Anyway, everybody enjoy. Sanika Fadway, thank you so much for being here. Um, let me, I, what a beautiful image. I can't stop looking at it. And I don't want to stop sharing because it's so great. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being here. Are you in Boston or are you in? in I'm in, in Boston, Boston now. Okay. Yeah, I've like definitely moved in um, fully. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <from> <laughs> I'm uh but I'm gonna do spotlight you so you are gonna get really big on everybody's screen okay. right now. So hopefully okay, great. There you are. And I'll be in the chat and I will summarize what you are doing for people who prefer their text written out. But um if there's anything you need, just hop just holler. But we're ready to go and we're really ready to make comics about food. So thank you for being here. Awesome. Um yeah, I'm when I was like look, I I, I felt so um sad that I did not know about Saw earlier because everyone who's like come on these workshops before and like everything is so like people I really admire and I mean thank you for having me I'm just so excited um and honored to be asked even to come um but okay so I'm just I'm gonna sorry. share my screen <laughs> um okay yes okay cool so y'all can see my screen how do I full screen my screen while talking to you? I don't know. Okay. You need to go slideshow present or something like that. Okay. You yes. Sorry. I'm there you go. Every time. Okay. Did that change? Um, 
I have like all these random um, pop-up things on my screen that I'm just getting rid of. Okay, so yeah, um, thank you for coming to this. Um, the image is a scorpion bowl, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that afterwards. But um, okay, cool. Um, I'm really happy that everybody is interested in making comics about food because sure. I am very interested in this and. I'm okay. I'll like, I'll talk about it later, later too. Okay, so I'll just start. Um, um, we might not be seeing the right window. I, oh, what we, what we see is your Google drop down menu still. Are you on a different window? Yeah. Um, oh. Let me stop. Okay. Sharing. Um, what am I doing wrong? Okay. So, oh, opened up in any window and then it, and Zoom was focused on a different one. Um, okay, so I've stopped sharing now, and then now I'm right trying again. to share again. Um, that, that do looks... you see my, do you see my presentation? Yes, presentation? it's not full screen, but we do see it, so. Okay, so now if I go to, like, slideshow, can you see the full screen now? No, nothing has changed. Isn't that interesting? Oh, okay. Hmm. What do I do? You to could... This? <laughs> um, you could, isn't that interesting? Do you have two screens or one screen? No, I just have one. So maybe the option for Zoom is like stop sharing and then share again, but you might have to share your whole desktop, which is a little scary. That's okay. That I mean, it's a, this can, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. If you share your whole desktop, that should solve it. Okay, cool. Just ignore my pop-up windows and my messy folders. Um, I don't know how to shut these, so I'll just like move them away. Well, you should um, be able to right to chrome or whatever you were here i i can't see my so this little thing i can't see it from my folder window but that's okay i'll just that's stop. We, oh, okay <laughs> actually all we see is the desktop let's try this one more time somebody no, in the chat you can't you still can't see it yeah no we see all, all okay. we see is your desk is is the little mm -hmm. image that says desktop and not and what not. am i doing wrong should i like leave and come back is that no, 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 no. That's not okay. it. It's a matter of of um, sharing the correct. Thing. It should pop up. What do you want to share? Do you want to share this window, this tab, this window? Yeah. But if you share your computer, that'll work. Or if you share uh, your browser with the okay. slideshow, we might be able to get you there. But I would show the entire computer. What about this? Yeah, that work. That'll work. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to slideshow. And this is. Yeah, we got it. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry <laughs> about that. Um, all right. I'm glad it worked. Okay. So, all right. I'll just jump into it. Um, I last, a couple months ago, I took a workshop by Shay Merck about memoir comics and that workshop changed my life, but I also like really loved how they started their class. And so I wanted to borrow their like workshop rules because I just think it sets up a good vibe. Um, so there are no rules. If you don't like a prompt and want to draw something else, that's okay. If you don't feel like drawing right now, that's also okay. And if you need to take a break at any point during this workshop, that's okay too. So this is a space to just have fun and make some comics. Um, and the first thing, if you feel comfortable doing so, please add your pronouns next to your name on Zoom. I'm going to do the same to my... Zoom name as we speak, although now everything is vanished. So I'm not uh, sure that. So I'm just going to tell you my pronouns are she, they, and um, oh, that was not supposed to happen. Go back. I'm so bad with technology. I'm so sorry. Try back out. I got the back out. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm here again. Um, okay. And I still don't like, I knew how to change. There it goes again. I'm so okay. sorry. <laughs> um, can someone okay. remind me how I can change my my name on the? Oh, it's uh, go to. You have to find yourself in in either the um, in a little okay. thumbnail. Oh, yes, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna do that real quick. Um. Yeah, so my pronouns are she, they, if y'all feel comfortable, feel free to add your pronouns too. 
And then the second thing is in the chat, please let me know what you're planning to have for dinner tonight or what you wish you were having for dinner tonight or both if you want, because I'm just curious and I want to know. Um, All right. Yeah, chicken. people are stuck. That's so oh, good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, salmon. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's moving so fast. Okay. I saw salmon and kale, which sounds great. Pasta yeah. pesto, also excellent. Halibut and asparagus. Oh, my God. You can make halibut? That's really impressive. <laughs> um. Wow. Wow. A focaccia pizza. Oh, my God. This is great. I'm so excited for you. I'm going to have a grilled cheese <laughs> with tomatoes. And I'm also excited for that. So I'm glad. Okay, cool. Thanks. I just wanted to know. I was just curious. And I'm also going to go read through those a little bit more when there is downtime. Um, okay, so let me go back into the slide. Um, all right. So I really, the the way that I got into food and like comics about food is that I didn't really know that that's what I was doing specifically. I thought I was just writing memoir comics and writing autobio comics. And then as time went on, um, people in my life started to be like, hey, you're really into food. And <laughs> it <laughs> sort of made me realize that the way I remember things is by like remembering what I was eating or like what I had eaten or something. And like, that's just how my memories are grounded. And the more I've made comics about food, I realized that that's the way like memory works for a lot of other people too. Um, and it's actually very common because, you know, we all have to eat and it's such an ex integral part of, of the, the human experience that there's just like a million things to say about food. And I really believe that even if every person on earth made a food comic, there would still be more things to say. So like, that's what I really love about this subject that, you know, there's always a story you can tell. Um, so this is a comic that I made a while ago about my grandma because I was really interested in how in my mother tongue, um, like a lot of different languages, the food is so tied in to like language that a lot of common metaphors that are said are, um, they're like tied into food imagery. So for example, um, yeah, this comic, I, I'm not sure how I feel about the title anymore, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. So for example, she would say, may your tongue burn and fall off. And then she meant, don't say that. Butter and sugar in your mouth could mean, may your words come true. I will starve you if you misbehave would mean I'll threaten to starve you when you misbehave. Um, watch TV while eating and your lunch will go into the donkey's stomach. Which means if you don't pay attention to your meal, it will not satisfy you. Men don't want to hold women who feel like skeletons in their arms. No one will marry you if you don't have curves. Um, here, eat also meant I'm sorry. If you brag about your meals, you'll be cursed with a stomach ache, meaning if you boast about your possessions without sharing them, you will be disliked. Use that energy to eat three times and hmm. calm down. <laughs> um, oh, I just need to hide this. Um, and then I can't read my own screen. Okay. <laughs> How do I move this? I'm sorry for getting so distracted. I, don't I, know moved. I can read some of it if you like, but you can also read the, uh, you can also just move your, you can usually grab the zoom things and move them and shrink them and things. If that's what you're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll move them around. Um, I don't know if that changes it for everybody else. No, <laughs> uh -huh. all we see is the, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, you look like dried fish, also meant you need more meat on your bones. I will make biryani, man. I'm happy with your grades, or I love you. Are you coming over for lunch and making your favorite, man? I miss you. <laughs> I'm making your favorite meals all week in case you decide to come visit. And I am proud of your struggle, man. I was hard on you because I thought I had to be. Um, and then one. Um, I also wanted to read some comics by other artists who I, whose work I really love and who I've been reading lately in preparation for my next project. Um, so this is Lucy Nisley, um, and this is an excerpt from her book, Relish. And, okay, I'm just going to get into it. 
Um, I grew up in a household where many of the meals are prepared by my caterer mother. No, we don't have ketchup. I will. I never want to hear that word again. We ate out often, and most of what I consumed was considered by adult standards to be above stand above above standard cuisine. This is good, mom. What is it? Squid. My parents recall their own childhood dinner table tables with shutters, frozen fish sticks, TV dinners, jello with carrots, creamed corn, olive loaf, boiled hot dogs, margarine, sanka. They grew up to discover food outside the realm of American standards they had grown up with and renounced the processed foods from their past. They resolved to shield their only daughter from such things. Mm-hmm. Chocolate bits. Um, and then it says organic over here. Denied the grocery favorites of my classmates, junky food became junky foods became the objects of curiosity and enticement to me, and my most parentally abhorred form of rebellion. Look, blue ketchup, purple punk hair at thirteen. Where did we go wrong? Gasp. My discovery of Lucky Charms remains a particularly fond memory. My middle school classmate Joe had a mom who didn't cook. She kept her pantry stocked with foods that her adolescent son could prepare. Pizza bits. Boop, boop. We didn't have a microwave. Wow. Amongst these items was an array of the sugariest, most artificially flavored cereals I had ever seen. Flick. Wow. What are these shaped things in the cereal? Marshmallows. Duh. Marshmallows? In cereal? It was at Joe's house that I discovered boxed macaroni pizza pockets, instant mashed potatoes, tater glop. My parents would probably have probably would have intervened if they had known what I was getting into over at Joe's. Somehow I knew not to mention it to them, Zelda. Especially not to my dad. You ate what? Tube of cookie <laughs> My father has always been torn between wishing me to remain a little girl and patiently waiting for me to be old enough to share his interests. Thanks, Dad. It's great. SAT prep, frilly dress. His scholarly and refined he's scholarly and refined and did not share many of the same interests as his tomboy daughter. Um, and he's reading Mark Hel- Helbrin. To be honest, I don't know who that is. Um, and then Lucy's reading Mad. We couldn't understand why his four-year-old that four-year-old daughter was dead set against a sushi dinner. No and was baffled when a wine bar did not allow his five-year-old daughter to accompany him for a drink after the opera. You will have to leave, sir. My father was especially horrified when he took me as an adolescent to Rome for spring vacation, and our beautiful hotel on the Piazza del Pantheon was marred by his prox- by its proximity to a McDonald's restaurant, the blight on my dad's life, our hotel. The divorce had been hard on us, While we grew closer with my mom, my dad and I often only saw one another during school vacations. To find common ground, we traveled. Move closer, dad, on our trip to London the year before. Unfortunately, by the time we went to Rome, I'd been caught up in preteen angst and saw the trip as stealing me away from my friends. Look, boo, the Coliseum. No, duh, rat. We fought. When you don't want to go somewhere, you say you're sick. If I say I don't feel good, then I don't feel good. The truth is my dad and I are sometimes too similar, too finicky and stubborn and easily wounded to get along all the time. Fine. Unwilling to sacrifice his vacation to my moods, my father force marched me through all the ancient ruins and wrestled me into every stone cellar bistro he could find. Grumble, 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 grumble. He could, he would order Oso Buco, the tomatoey whale stew, and I would plow through mountains of creamy pasta carbonara. Momentary truce. But, it, but despite our Italian favorites, by the end of the week, we had argued and sniped at each other to the end of our patience. He left me sullen and viney at the hotel one night to go out of town. Fine, stay in then. Scared and angry, I ventured out into the foreign crowd alone at midnight. I went to a bar. I ordered a cup of hot chocolate and was given the most decadent cup of thick, dark chocolate. I I got to the hotel. When I got to the hotel, my dad was still out. He didn't return for a few hours, and I was sure he was going to leave me in the hotel forever. 
The next day, I left the hotel early. I went straight to the McDonald's in the square. Even though it was early, I could feel I could I could buy a hamburger and fries, warm and familiar, the grease eating through the bag and the smell exactly the same as it was at home. I sat on the floor of the hotel room eating my breakfast. When my dad woke up, the first thing he noticed was that as I was eating, uh, was what I was eating. Horrified, he berated me for eating junk in one of the finest culinary cities in the world. How can you do that with relish? Below us in the piazza, cafes were serving incredible breakfast delicacies. Biscotti, espresso with fresh cream, kintz jam from Tuscany. But I went on gleefully licking my lips on the salt from the fries, crunching into the familiar thin sliced pickle, yellow mustard running down my chin. When I got home, my mother, having heard about my rebellious breakfast, began a smear campaign to convince me that the hamburgers at McDonald's were actually made of worm meat. Miraculously, I was undeterred. They grind up worms and then they mix it with boogers. Well, it's delicious. Um, and I really love this comic, but I just want to, before we, before I go to the next comic, I want to like open up the floor and see if anything strikes you, um, or think things that you feel excited about when you read this, I don't know, anything really, or just like a panel that you enjoy. Okay. I'll tell, I'll ask people in the chat. Somebody just says food. I love, I, I've got a daughter that age, so I can, I know that rebellion. <laughs> but she's 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 a gluten-free so she doesn't eat mcdonald's um no. aya says the yummy descriptions yeah it's so funny to see the the kid go to descriptive writing the rebellious spirit the battle of the wills through food yeah the characterization too i it's like she does such a good job um explaining how like her relationship with her father and I think that that panel where like they're both just like saying they're like oh, fine and the word fine is like so big behind them mm -hmm. that also ties in with like somebody who's saying lettering. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the my favorite thing about this is the lettering too. the good colors. There's a limited color palette um, that she like uses throughout the book, but also like. Thanks for pointing out the colors. I, oh my God, the food mentions are so funny. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to focus on one thing at a time. This, everything, like, oh my God, such good points. I love how, like, it's so smart of her to, like, whatever age she's at, even if she's drawing, oh, now this is going ahead again. I'm sorry, I need to go back. Um, Even when she's, like, really small and she's, like, two years old or three years old, um, she draws her, how do I okay <laughs> she draws herself wearing the same shirt and it's like throughout the same thing you can always identify her when she's like 13 and she has like different hair but the shirt's still the same oh, yeah. Um, and yeah the the way the the letters just jump out and they're so expressive and even the colors of them like tie into how you're supposed to feel um, god I love that panel um, <laughs> Wenchful eating is such a good point. I feel like so many different comics can be made about wenchful eating. Um, yeah. Okay. And very good point with the lettering too, because this is another thing that she does in the same book. This is another excerpt from the same book where she like breaks up each comic story. These are like mini comics and she breaks them up with recipes. But sometimes she has these like huge full page like just one sentence or like big drawings with a couple words and she like mixes up the letters and now it's all like you know like light and airy and like cookies are all about comfort and that that lettering feels so it has all these loops and it feels so friendly and welcoming um but yeah I'm just gonna read this section also um, so my mother might scoff at the unimaginative chocolate chip cookie, but when she can be persuaded, she makes a mean batch. Perfect. After all these years of me ritualistically dropping spoonfuls of chip peppered cookie dough on baking sheets, she still trumps me in cookie skills. Imperfect. More perfect than ever. Maybe because baking, unlike cooking, is more of an exact science. 
My mother's steady hand and cool head make her an excellent baker, though she prefers the creative freedom of cooking. Mom's always been good at chemistry. Her grandfather was a chemical inventor. My baking is too emotional, too volatile, with distress to ever match mom's cookie perfection. Art school, love, politics, family, health, money. But my cookies contain the anxious deliciousness earned through an afternoon spent in turmoil, soothed by separating my troubles into warmy, crisp, warm, crispy pieces. And I like this panel is when like that color palette breaks that she has like set up throughout the book kind of like this is the only time in the entire book where this gradient appears. And I love how like different it feels and how it's like removed out of time. Um, yeah. And then I think there's one more page from this book, which is one of these pages where she like after telling us a story, she breaks them down into a recipe. But even the recipe is really subjective and for example, the best chocolate chip cookies, but it says, buy friends, bribe favors. <laughs> and I, I just think that's so sweet. And these little, like, anim these, like, tiny creature cookies who are, like, running around in the recipe are also such a good touch. And, like, show me. I, I read them as, like, this is how she feels when she is baking. Um, Yeah, I'm also going to, I'm sorry if I'm, um, let me know if, if anyone says anything in the chat that you want me to stop and address, because I realize that I'm I'm not good at paying attention to multiple things at once. No, it's good. So, okay. <laughs> oh, what have I done? Okay, never mind. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, I don't know if y'all saw, but I accidentally like maximized the chat, and it was the only thing on my screen. No. Um, <laughs> so, okay. The thing so, you can't see is Zoom. We see everything else on your screen, but not Zoom. So that's how it works. <laughs> good. Um, so the next person whose comics I want to read is Navid Mahadavian. Um, uh, and then this is a comic that appeared in the LA Times in the op comic section. He is a New Yorker cartoonist. He also writes for a lot of other publications. But his new book just came out, which looks really great. I cannot wait to read it. And it's called This Country, um, Finding Home in Very Rural America. Um, and so this is this is one of his comics about food. Um, and then the cover page says Iranian cooking for dummies. And the title is Op Comic, uh, Family Traditions and Acquired Tastes. On my first trip with Emily to visit my parents, my mom made us my favorite Iranian dish. I can't get used to how sour Iranian food is. I had never noticed it was sour. The flavors of Emily's childhood are pepper, garlic, and mayonnaise. Mine are cardamom, rose water, and dried lemon. These are the flavors I associate with my mother, with feelings of warmth and safety. Rose water, now with extra rose. Oh, I love this, like, this tiny, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I love this little, like, drawing of where the liquid is sloshing against the bottle. Um, they're also mysterious. In my 20s, I tried to learn to cook Iranian food, but it is labor intensive and I am impatient. Make it two pizzas. And then the book is called Iranian Cooking for Dummies. Iranian food is associated with the sofre, a cloth on which food is served, usually on the ground for special occasions. To spread the sofre means set to set the table. The word can mean many things, both literally and figuratively. Safriya Yadel, spread of the heart, means to share your innermost thoughts and feelings. But in my childhood, the appearance of the Safriya usually meant someone had died. And usually that meant, usually that someone had lived back in back home in Iran. Like seances, these Safriyas would, would conjure the dead. Ring, ring. My parents left Iran as teenagers, early in the revolution, not knowing they would be able to return home for a decade. Iran hostage, C, day 12. What is happening to our country? After my parents were allowed to visit Iran, they would go back occasionally to attend funerals. They would return to America as ghosts of themselves, as ghosts themselves. I was just about to visit him. My three-year-old daughter, Elika, and I are finally learning to cook Iranian food together. Like her mother, 
she has grown up primarily mayonnaise with she has grown up with primarily mayonnaise based flavors. How much turmeric? My mom on the phone. Just eyeball it. My eyeballs are unhelpful. I wonder if Elika will have my eyes. Elika and I said to Safreya often, Iranians place a sugar cube on their tongue before sipping. Now a tea party is enough of an occasion. Um, yeah, so that is going to lead into our first activity. But also before we get into that, I really want to read in the chat if anything else jumps out to you that is exciting um, about this comic. Well, we have a lot of Iranians actually commenting. Oh my God, that's so cool. I really hope I pronounced um, Sofreya correctly. I was like looking at the pronunciation before, but I, I wasn't sure if my sources were good. Um, and please correct me. Oh, um, I've never had Iranian rice, but that sounds so good. Like rose <laughs> sounds like such a good flavor to have in all your food. Oh, Safri. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm. I wonder if he like scanned those in, or they were just a part of like scanned them in separately, or if he does line art together. The name of his book is. So this is not from the book. This is a standalone comic, but the name of his book is um, "This Country Finding Home in Very Rural America," and all his comics are amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan. Uh, yeah, that's what I love. So I'm, I'm, um, Mahur is saying the detail about the sugar cube on the tongue was, and I just, that's what I think is so cool that um, the more specific the details about your food stories, the more um, relatable they become. And I don't know, it like it's that specific thing that can like trigger a big association for someone. Um, and it could be anything, you know, it's really exciting. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. all right, that again. Um, so to move on to the next thing, our first short activity, which is only going to be five minutes is whatever you put, whatever you have in front of you, um, draw a meal that you've eaten in the past that you wouldn't mind never eating ever uh -huh. again and write one sentence about this meal. Um, I don't have a second screen to share my drawing, but after I draw, I'll just like hold hold my notebook up. Um, but yeah, I'll like put five minutes on my clock and I'll let you know. And all right, are time you... for some now. <laughs> okay, great. We've got five minutes for this. Sinika, are you drawing on paper or are you drawing on your iPad? Um, I'm drawing on paper. I can like hold it up. If yeah, I you can hold it up every once in a while and just to see what you're doing. But because I Put what was in the screen here on the in the chat so people can catch that. Oh, um, should I draw on an iPad? Uh, that... It'd probably be too complicated to figure it out. That's okay. okay. Meanwhile, I'm going to ask people what what horrible I or at least what meal they wouldn't mind not <laughs> eating again. Tell us your meal. All right. Oh, no. Somebody doesn't, <laughs> doesn't like stuffing. I can't think of a meal I didn't like. I like all food. I'm trying to think of it. What is natto? Yeah, Sophia, you'll have to tell us in the chat what that is. Oh. Mm. I know it's something I had as a kid. I'm gonna write down fermented soybeans. Is that what natto is? <laughs> what is? I'm so curious about all this, and I know that these are like anti recommends, but I'm like so curious about these that now I kind of want to try them. <laughs> it is hard to it's hard to do home homemade eggplant parmesan. So it sounds like Andrea's dad didn't do a good job of that. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> no one likes natto, apparently. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Tofu's fermented so soybean and isn't, uh, or tempeh is. Hmm. Fascinating. Liver. Is there a liver that people do like? I feel like. Sure. Um, Chicken I, liver. Yeah. I also really, I, I do enjoy um, goat liver. Yeah. Oh, wow. Never had that. My family like fights for it. Ang says, this is one time I mixed up the paprika bottle with the cinnamon bottle and I made the world's <laughs> worst drink. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I just realized that I recognize somebody in the chat. That's so exciting. Yay. Hi. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, Mary from Wisconsin says lots of people like liverwurst. Oh, yeah. so you need to be taught how to eat natto? Yeah, I'm going to have to look this up. So amazing. <laughs> Graham cracker soup. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's funny, a few of these are like, this is what my mom would do. <laughs> this is what my dad would do, kind of like Lucy Nisley's parents, I suppose. Um, when I was um, a kid, I did not like to eat cauliflower, and my grandfather convinced me that cauliflower was Italian shrimp, and then I ate it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it was good. So I, I kind of understand them trying to make you a graham cracker milk soup. All right, I think we've only got about a minute left. Is that right, Alice? Mm -hmm. Yes, one minute. Okay. Oh. Terrible airplane food. They don't even make airplane food anymore, at least last time, I, last few times I've been. <laughs> These are great. I'm really enjoying these. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Oh, the fried amoeba sandwich. Poor Eli hurt his mom's feelings. That and bloody prime rib. All right. What's next for us, Anika? Okay. Amazing. So um, I'm just finishing up my... I wasn't able to write down my sentence, but I can like show you what I drew. And if anyone wants to like, well, maybe you can do that in the end. Okay, I'll, I'll bring it back. But um, so what I drew is, thank you whoever mentioned Aspic. Um, wow. I don't know if y'all can see this. This is um a fish jello that I very um confidently tried to make a couple years ago. And I found a recipe that was like in the New York Times. And I was like, okay, someone's done this before. But it was one of those recipes in the 70s where they just assume that everybody knows how to cook. So instead of saying, boil this at this temperature and reduce, it would just say, reduce broth. And so the way you make it is you make a fish curry and then you add gelatin to the curry and then like make, like turn the curry into gelatin as you cook. And it's horrible. It takes seven hours and it's like, you're so hungry by the end of it. And then it tastes so bad and it's not worth it. But um, all right. Uh, <laughs> so the next little thing we're going to do is um, draw an object that you wish was edible that isn't edible. Um, yeah, something you wish you could eat that you can't. And this is also five minutes, so... And then if y'all want to share in the chat and also write a sentence about it. I don't know if I mentioned it on the slide, but write a little sentence next to it. Um, okay, that's great. So I wrote that cloud. Somebody wrote cats. Somebody else wrote cute scented erasers. I'm so literal. I can't imagine eating, eating any of these things. <laughs> that's probably a good, it's like a good safe impulse to not eat things that are not edible. Right, right. 
fish gravel. Oh, that's a good one. I, yeah, those are really yummy looking. Seashells, scented markers. Oh, that's good. Oh, insulation. Paper <laughs> dragons. Does look like cotton candy, some insulation. Flowers. Neon bouncy balls and clear coins from elementary school. Wow. Red toadstool with white spots. <laughs> awesome treasure box and a pillow. Styrofoam. Whoa. A boba. I want to take a boba straw to the ponds with a lot of duckweed, somebody, Sarah says. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Tons and colored pencils. It says Jenna blocks, but it blocks, but I think they wrote Jenga. Yeah, there we go. It got corrected. Scrap metal. Oh my God. Oh my God. I am curious about what about that makes you wish it was metal. It does look like, I mean, it, you know, the way you can sometimes shred chocolate in this really interesting way, you can shred oh, metal in one way, maybe. I don't like know. A good crisp curl. Then I yeah, can. Right, it. right. Yeah, good crisp <laughs> curl. Oh my God. And Sarah says, it's a cliche, but I've nearly eaten my D and D dice a few times. Wait, yeah. I mean, the, the most dangerous would be like you know how they have like team dice that look like different things. If somebody intentionally made like dice that look like candy or chocolate, it would be impossible to resist. Yeah, that would be real trouble. Gummy, gummy bear dice. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> It would probably be illegal. It would probably get them in a lot of trouble. Hmm. They do make candy dice, Sarah says. Oh, see, that's why it's a problem. I wish I could eat my cups like Willy Wonka, somebody says. Erica says that. Um, butternut squash, <laughs> totally edible already. But all right, I see what you're saying. I think a hairbrush. I I have a dog who ate a hairbrush, so I don't know if that counts or not. I do understand about the butternut squash. It is not my favorite, and I did not know before moving to New England that it is such a big thing, and uh, it's everywhere, and it's in everything. Oh. Eliza says one of my favorite scenes in the Phantom Toll Booth is when Milo taste tests different letters and he thinks the I is cool and icy. And... That also sounds like something having like a really cool synesthesia. Um I have one more minute. Mm -hmm. I think mine would be birch trees. I'm putting that in the chat. One over Can you birch, eat birch trees? Is that? No, it's possible. Yeah, maybe you could. Yeah, that's. See, I'm. I mean, little. I don't know, but I feel like <laughs> if it's a nature, maybe you could eat it. Yeah. <laughs> like a hot dog that looked like a birch tree, I would definitely eat. Wow. <laughs> wood, wood shavings. Wish I could taste color, Anita says. That's great. Yeah. All right. Are we doing on time? Yes. Sounds pretty sound. Perfect. Um, so I wrote tiny glass bottles in novelty stores because they're usually so like perfectly shaped and they're uh -huh. like clear and so smooth. And I like it's so tempting to eat them and I don't understand. So I wrote um tiny glass bottles in novelty stores. What is the point of these? What are you supposed to put in these? I don't know. But um, Flying Tiger is a store I went to once. And they have so many tiny glass bottles all like laid. And it's like dangerous because it's right next to their like cookies. And it feels like it feels implied that you feel hungry about these. Or maybe it's just me. Anyway. Um, all right. And then the final short activity that we're going to do. Get us loosey goosey is um, draw a meal that you don't enjoy eating, eating uh, don't enjoy making, 
but you love being made for you oh. and write one sentence about it. And then this is also five minutes. Also, now that I'm writing these, I'm like, I should have planned answers, but I did not. I was just excited about the questions. And now I'm also coming up with these. Oh, the that's, a, that's a fine <laughs> way to work, I think. <laughs> yeah. So someone wrote fried chicken, gumbo. Oh, yeah. Sugiyaki king cake. I'm not sure what king cake is. Chow fun. Sushi. Oh, did is someone it... say king cake? King cake. What is king cake? Um, Like king cake? K-I-N-G. King. Yeah. Oh, my God. I recently had it, and it's so good. It's like, um, it's a cake. And there's a tiny baby Jesus hidden inside the cake. Oh, oh. Gato Ra. Right? Yeah, Gato Ra. Unless a, I'm getting French, it. If that's the same thing. Yeah, that's the French. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. A friend of mine once um, told me that his family had this tradition that if you get the cake, if you get the baby Jesus, then you have to be the person who hosts um, the next party and like makes the cake the next time and he knew that his mom would not be able to make the cake so he just like ate the jesus and didn't tell anyone he just like ate <laughs> probably other ways to hide the G hide that but okay he was a kid and that was his plan <laughs> oh, 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 oh gosh what a great story somebody should <laughs> that story for sure yeah <laughs> yeah why did you just swallow that down desperate times and loyalties <laughs> go big or go home <laughs> nobody put ice cream yet it's pretty tough to make ice cream I mean not that tough but not a lot of people do it I actually I have no idea how ice cream is made I know that there's a machine involved but I, I can't uh -huh. imagine how 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 it feels like magic to me. Um, I forgot to see the time this time, so please do let me know when I am. Let's assume we have about two minutes. I'm thinking. Okay. So. Oh, lumpia, yeah. Um. Oh, there's some things that are so hard to like you know, fry correctly or fold correctly. Like who can make a croissant? Oh, there we go. Catherine just said that same thing. Very hard to make anything with phyllo dough or anything. Cheesecake. Baked potatoes and rice take forever, but are fun to eat. <laughs> anything with meat in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I once like annihilated my kitchen trying to make pav bhaji. My like pressure cooker exploded. And then there was like Pav Haji on the ceiling. It was oh, no. <laughs> Eli doesn't want to cook anymore. Worth it. <laughs> oh, it was Eli whose mom was a bad cook, I think. Oh. Hi. We had a friend in when in uh, a town I lived in who once every couple of months would call up everybody and say, okay, it's Pad Thai night. I'm making Pad Thai for anyone in the neighborhood who wants it. Oh. All you have to do is come to my house with $7 and I will send you home with a thing of pad thai and he would just make this enormous, gigantic, God. full pad thai. And he'd make it for like 30 people. He would just come to the door with your plate and go home with this pad thai. It was great. Is he still in Providence? That was in Gainesville, Florida. He's still, oh, okay. he's still there, I think. And I don't know why he got so good at pad thai, but he certainly did. I was going to be like, maybe I should move back to Providence yeah, and right, become right. friends with your friend, but I don't think I can move to Florida. It's too far. I can. I, I wonder if a change. He, I know he was thinking of moving to the Northeast, so I'll see where he with Colin. Okay, I think we're our two minutes is up. So All right, cool. Um, so, Bonset. Oh my God, my friend made me Bonset um, a couple of years ago. It was incredible. It was so good um okay so i made i drew that i made um sabudana wada it's like a 
and it says hot oil and I again I started writing a sentence and I got distracted I'm very sorry I'm bad at my own uh, I just get distracted fast um but it's like this is what I would have written um it's it is a ball I can't it's like a patty but it's made of tapioca balls that you soak overnight and I have tried making it multiple times but it's like I get it to the stage that I'm supposed to fry it and then I completely I'm bad at frying it and I can I either over fry it or I burn it or I get oil all over the kitchen and it's hot and it's, a, it's just a hazard um but it's my favorite food in the world and um okay cool sorry um my drawing oh should I like stop sharing yeah if that's your last slide let's stop sharing yes and we'll, okay. okay so yeah, I mean go. it's not my last slide but um okay oh. sorry so this was the Sabudana Wera drawing and the the flames going all over and then this was the fish drawing with the these were like dill sticks and carrot flowers and this like yeah. fish staring at me and these yeah. are the tiny little glass bottles um Okay, cool. So I should share again, actually. There's one more thing that I wanted to read to y'all um, before going into... Is there time, do you think, to read one more thing before going into... Yeah, the... sure. Okay. Mine is more well. Um, all right, so this is a short comic um, that I wrote recently in while, while in Shay's workshop, and I was just excited about it. Okay, so... It's not up anywhere yet. It was briefly and I took it down because I was shy. Okay, so it's called Wedding Juice. Um, ooh. Uh, Dad's forehead, mom, they always call me from different rooms of the same apartment. Dad always holds his phone at a high angle to remind us that he still has his hair. Mom huh. always looks worryingly tired these days. Me. I want to do a costume change before the father-daughter dance. Sanika, did you call the tailor about your wedding dress? Yes, I did. He's working on it. I have not called the tailor. Yeah. By the way, Sanika, we are going to do a special juice for the wedding. I love this concept. Cool. What is it? It is called the New Zealander. Oh, cool. Does that have kiwis in it? It's a special juice. It has milk in it, I think. It does not have milk. That was a different one. That we didn't choose. Wait, but does it have kiwis in it in that juice sonica there are let me check hmm i tried it sonica egg thumbs over this okay yes it has lemon kiwi green apple and basil oh wow but uh i mean that sounds amazing but i'm allergic to kiwis oh <laughs> i didn't know this i don't remember this it's okay you don't have to drink it you can drink the other juice it is not as good no <laughs> Ramesh, we have to change it Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry for making you change your plans. Okay, Sanika, we will change. But you should have tried it. You would have loved it. I'm sure you will like it. None of the other juices were so good. Lol. Okay, Dad. When I'm ready to die, I will let you know. And you can bring <laughs> your under. Okay. Why are you talking about death now? Always so negative, Sanika. Um, okay. So... Um, I wasn't gonna, I, I just like put this in there, put, put another comic in there just in case I had time, but I think we can totally go to the, the main section of the, um, of the, the workshop, um, which is the three to four panel comic. And oh my gosh, I don't think we have time for that, Sonica. Pardon? I don't think we have time for 20 more minutes. We can try. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> oh I'll no. You, it's your, it's up to you. But I'm totally okay with it. We could either um, <laughs> we could either do this, maybe maybe shrink it down to ten or fifteen minutes, and then mm -hmm. and then because uh, we have to close down at ninety at ninety minutes. Yes, so that makes sense. So and then um, we share for ten minutes, maybe after that, or um, so maybe just do this quicker. The three to four panel comic. Yes. Okay. We'll do a Let's quick do three panel comic. 10 minutes and then we share. Oh, I'm so okay. sorry. I, no, it's okay. Um, We're just running low, running fast. When I practiced earlier, I took way less time and I think I just took <laughs> It's quite okay. But this is great. The first meal you remember just for yourself. I'd love to ask people what they think in the chat. And um, if you don't remember the meal you made, you made for yourself, um, you can make, you can draw the first meal you remember making for someone else. 
but I am curious of what you made just for yourself for like nobody else. Oh my God, I can't remember. Nobody taught me anything. And I got to college and I was like, what do I do now? I don't know what. Uh, anyway, that's nobody's problem. <laughs> Donya's writes ruined eggs. That's a great one. So put that in the chat and we'll have 10 minutes. So Seneca will work until 18 minutes or uh, eight minutes after. Does that work? Okay. Yes, that's totally fine. Yeah. Oh, and Kate Young says, I just offered this exact prompt in a workshop I'm teaching. Hilarious. That's so exciting. Oh, my God. We think alike. Also, Seneca, if we st if we stop at 10 minutes, a lot of people will keep working while other people want to share. So so there'll so a few people get 20 minutes in, so it'll work. Awesome. That's okay. Yes, that's that's totally cool. Okay. And I'm also glad you didn't have that Kiwi drink because no, no one wants that to happen to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> me neither so embarrassed by the first thing i ever made for myself this will be a crazy comic is ants on a log a meal andrea says i think yes, so it is yeah. a meal. i counted yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay Bowl of cereal. Yeah, bowl of cereal, I guess, counts. Oh, wow. Sesame Street said, if you eat cereal, you'll live longer. And this person at five, Dominique at five, was deeply afraid of death at five years old. So therefore, ate cereal. <laughs> Ants on a log is raisins on peanut butter, right? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. I think like honey, too. I don't know. Maybe. It's peanut butter in the hollow of a celery stick. I forgot that part with a line of raisins on top. That is a very complex thing for a child. So I think that counts. Yeah. As... <laughs> how did you how do you even get the peanut butter in there? Yeah. Like inside the hollow of the log. Oh yeah. Some people are choosing to make to draw the first thing they ever made successfully. <laughs> Otherwise That's I'll get cheating. <laughs> Otherwise I'll get depressed of all my early cooking disasters. <laughs> not knowing how to peel a peel off of garlic <laughs> oh ants on a snowy log is cream cheese instead of peanut butter isn't that interesting wow i kind of want to try that yeah it's probably really good sweetness and cream, and cream cheese there you go steve says hash browns with onion chopped up potato and onion and sauteed it Well, that leads to my first kitchen knife injury, Andrea says. No! First meal. Oh, yeah, waffles. Eli, did you make the batter of the waffles? Or were they like the frozen kind of toaster oven? Oh, yay, you know. Does anyone remember Steakum sandwiches? I'm going to ask that in the chat. Sanika, what is your first meal? Um, I tried to make cheesecake. <laughs> Uh, wow that's not even a meal that's a dessert but I never made anything before and it was I was trying to there was this like kids newspaper and there was a recipe in a kids newspaper it was not a real recipe or maybe I don't know what I did but there were like ants all over my kitchen and <laughs> uh there was like food everywhere my mom wasn't home and then when she came home she was so mad at me oh I tried to cook it like I tried to we didn't have an oven. I didn't I didn't know what a cheesecake was. I don't think I'd ever had a cheesecake. I thought it was a cake. It was the in whole both, thing. In both cases, you would need an oven. They didn't tell you. Yeah. I think they, they mentioned it, but I hadn't read the whole recipe before <laughs> I started. Uh. 
I also think that I tried to make the base of the cheesecake out of apples. And I just like, there were six apples at home and I put all of them in the mixer and like made a pulp out of them. And then I was like, now what do I do with all this apple pulp? And it was just... Did you have a cake pan? No, I tried to make it in a crock pot. It was not going to happen. I don't know what I was doing. Oh, but... my God. But it was... My mom made me eat it. <laughs> Somebody in the chat, Andrea is reminding us of mini bake ovens. What is a mini bake oven? A little toy oven. It's about the size of, you know, it's about six inches wide. And you can bake little, like little, uh, tiny little cakes in it. That's amazing. Yeah, Courtney says, so maybe... And then Sarah says it is a real mini oven. Courtney says it's a scam. So maybe some people had good experiences and others didn't. That's great. I love an oven. I mean, I actually think that it's a really cool idea to have a tiny oven that kids are also allowed to use. Totally. Oh, my gosh. I would make so many cakes if I was a child with an oven, I think. Maybe that's why they didn't give me an oven. <laughs> I mean, I just, our house just didn't come with it. I asked for a dog and got an easy bake. <laughs> LED bulbs ended the easy bake. It was a toy oven in the 60s. And I ran out of the mixes. Huh. They still make it, Priya says. You can find 2020s. It's a great idea. Maybe I should get one. Oh, wow. They have to smuggle incandescent bulbs from Nevada in their cars in California. Mm -hmm. If you had an easy bake oven, there must be some other option, but maybe not. Oh, my God. I love the commitment <laughs> for the easy bake oven. And just says, does anyone else love drawing splatter? I do. Um, that's why I do comics about food. She says. <laughs> lots of, in the chat, lots of people talking about the Easy Bake Oven. Shrinky dink flashbacks. That's right. You know, and they also they had these things where you could make uh you'd pour this jello into these little molds and you could have creepy crawly things. It would heat up in a little plastic oven too. So they were like jello insects? Yeah, kind of. They're like, yeah. I forget what they were called. Somebody in the chat will remember, I'm sure. Creepy crawlers. There we go. Mary from Wisconsin knew instantly. Um That's fascinating. yeah, yeah, they were really fun. And I assume it was a similar product that it heated up. Karen says, I love those creepy crawly things. 
I'm going to do a lot of Googling after this. <laughs> well, save the chat. For you. <laughs> they were dangerous and toxic. Oh, no. <laughs> so, what do you think, Sen Seneca? Our 10 minutes is up. I think if we uh, invited... Yes. If we took a look at yours and then invited people to share cool. that might yeah. and, and then um uh, and then some people will keep working and that'll work out okay. Um okay, so this says expectations and it's a perfect cake and it says perfect frosting, buttercream fondant, and then the people's reactions to it are my grandma is saying you're my favorite grandchild and then this person's saying wow sonica you're a genius we love you and your cake and then this little character is thinking yes um and then reality is it's just a messy kitchen and then there's ants everywhere there's like a fire um and i was gonna draw over here my mom being like now you eat it <laughs> um yeah but awesome. I'm so excited to see what y'all. Right. Well, I'll take a look. And again, we'll probably limit the sharing to to the end of the half hour. So we have got about uh, maybe it's long, maybe it's a while, twenty minutes. Um, we'll start with Eli. We'll go to Chris, then Edgar, and then anybody else who wants to raise their hand. Okay, let's see. Ask to unmute. Replace spotlight. Great. I'm so glad to go first because now I can enjoy everyone else's without sweating about talking. Um, I get so anxious. Um, I just went ahead and um, kept uh, just made the exercises and made the four panel one just be one. And my first exercise was a meal I don't ever want to eat again, which is this Thai restaurant in a really sketchy neighborhood that I wanted to try out. And I ordered something that sounded really good, but when the server came and just like smacked it down on the table. <laughs> It was like this, it was like a piece of leather that had been run over by a million cars with like a raw egg just sort of plopped on the top of it and like really undercooked rice. And I usually can make the best of things, but I could not think of what to do to enjoy this meal, except it came on a beautiful green plate. So <laughs> about all I could live with. And then the things I wish were edible was, were seashells. I think that those would be mm -hmm. delicious. Um, and then um, a meal that I can't probably wouldn't be able to make very well is um, is the um, this uh, really good restaurant and um, it's also in a sketchy neighborhood. It's called Pakwan and it's really good. Um, um, oh my god, I just forgot a Pakistani restaurant. And so the chicken tikka masala and the sag paneer. I'm gonna ruin these words and the lentil dal and the delicious garlic naan. I just would eat that to the end of time and then my um first meal that i cooked for myself was a waffle and i put it in the too, too much of uh, the batter in and the the waffle iron like expanded up really <laughs> wide and it just like sort of blobbed all of everything um but it was delicious so thank you that was super fun i loved this this I, these are lot. so beautiful i love how you're like drawing with color and like your lines are <laughs> color and i they're so expressive i love the flood of batter <laughs> that's awesome thanks, thanks. thanks for sharing okay we go to chris um and then edgar then don you here we go thanks i only have two things to share one is um the meal that you would never want to you wouldn't mind if you never end and again <laughs> I had a friend from Argentina and he cooked a bunch of organ meats and stuff for us once. And one of the things he made was um, kidneys um, from some animal. And I didn't know how they would taste. But when I tasted them, um, if you've ever been in a bathroom in a state park that's been there for <laughs> decades, and this is, these are the urinals, I act, it felt like I was licking the floor. <laughs> and it just must be an acquired taste because kidneys, you know. But that's what I remember. Um, and something that I wish was edible would be a wine bottle or a beer bottle. Like you finish the bottle of wine and then you could just eat the bottle. <laughs> eat the bottle. <laughs> that's, this is really interesting. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. That's so specific, that visceral emotion of like that one specific action. Now everyone knows exactly what you felt like. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
We'll go to Edgar next. Here we go. Well, well Chris, I like your variety. And thank you. So, is it Seneca? Seneca. Seneca. Thank you for your theme. I went off topic and I'm tech heavy tonight, but I hope it's worth it. It's called Unforgettable Mom Cuisine. And the first panel, menu introduction. Maybe you're like me and my younger brother, Frazier. There are dishes that your mom makes that never taste as good when you get them from anywhere else, even from a five-star French chef in Paris. Five stars for mom. We oh. start with breakfast. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we start with breakfast. The whole family loved our mom's cream chip beef, not even from the chow hall cook at Ellsworth Air Force Base who made the best omelet I ever ate. Did it come <laughs> close? Lunch. There's my brother. My brother loved my mother's pimento cheese sandwiches. He's trying to eat it in one bite. When I eat one, I think of mom. Then we go to dinner. Spaghetti and meat sauce. She would sizzle ground beef, add Prince's meat sauce, cook Muller's Dutch egg noodles, uh, spaghetti. Sometimes she would add green pepper, but no garlic. I could never twirl my fork neatly and there's edgar's plate oh. then <laughs> then thank and i still can't and then thanksgiving dessert ambrosia mandarin orange slices pineapple coconut whipped cream on top it is heaven on earth and there's there it's sitting in the little glass cup on the fancy thanksgiving table spread then july 4th cookout Dad grills the hot dogs and hamburgers. My mom makes the very mild chili for the hot dogs and the mayonnaise coleslaw, not vinegary. Frazier is very particular about coleslaw. Too vinegary. <laughs> then we go to mom's funeral. She loved Westphalia ham. After her funeral at Arlington National Cemetery, we had a reception at Fort Myer. The caterer could not provide the ham, but they let us bring in a pound. Those in the know rushed to get some fat. And there it is on the end of the buffet table. And I conclude with, I wonder if mom can cook for us in heaven. Oh my God, that's like a whole timeline. Like you took us through this whole, like a big period of time and like such a cool way, a menu to like, it's a menu memoir. Oh my God, I would love to read that. Oh well, I'll I'll, I'll send I'll send it to Tom, or you can see it on the. I'll totally put it in the PDF. Yes. Yeah, that's so exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate your enthusiasm. I had a good time doing it, although I run. I, you know, I got to color it in, but thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Five stars for mom. We'll go to Danya next and then Sarah, <laughs> Marsh, then Izzy. We might have time for, I'm not sure if we'll have time to go beyond that, but we need people to um, come onto the screen. We can't, we can't focus or uh, we'll go to Sarah first and then we'll go because Sarah's ready. There we okay. go. Thanks for these prompts. They were, they were pretty fun. Um, so I just have the, the four prompts. So the first one being the meal I wouldn't mind never having again. Um, when I came for an interview once, they forgot to set set up like an actual lunch time for, for us. So I had to eat the worst sandwich of my adult life in the hospital cafeteria. Oh, my God. And, and I also did like dribble it all over my face like this, which was very awkward. Um, uh, thing, thing that I wish was edible were my fountain pen ink samples. Um, I get intrusive thoughts of, of drinking them, like like drinking a shot. <laughs> um, yeah, thing I thing I don't like making, but like having made for me. Um, anything with meat in it, because I don't like how like the meat juice gets all over the kitchen and everything slimy, smells weird, everything. Um, and then when I was a kid, when I learned to make lunch, make lunch for myself, I would make these like incredibly sad little sandwiches that was a single <laughs> slice of bread plus a single slice of like paper thin ham and a single slice of bread again to make a single ham sandwich um, that, I, that I called an entire meal. <laughs> and that was the extent of my cooking skills when I started. But I do know how to cook now. That's oh, so nice. cool. A sandwich is a meal. Um, <laughs> 
with just a couple more. Yeah, I mean, it's a really great start. I think it's awesome. <laughs> awesome. This, is all, this is all made me hungry. I have to go make dinner now. <laughs> Good. Uh, but a marsh next, and then is he here? We go. Let's see. Uh, ah, there. All right. Um, got the last couple of prompts because I liked how they turned out. Um, so food I like. Um having made for me but not being for myself is king cake it's very delicious but time intensive um and it's best with cream cheese filling the last time i made it um i couldn't find a plastic baby to put in so i ended up putting in a little plastic pig which <laughs> may have been a little bit like blasphemous but it, it worked um so i have secret baby pink baby pigs uh, are supposed to be as smart as babies i think I'm, I don't know if that's real, but I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, the first food I remember making was probably instant ramen because it's fast and involves no knives or fire. Um, me and my sister would uh, we would only get to have it on Tuesday nights when our mom was out late um, going to Tai Chi classes. Um, and some years later, my dad taught me how to fry an egg into it, uh, which did improve the taste and involved a little bit of fire. Mm -hmm. um, so that's I, it. I love the drawing with the the smoke rising out of it, like almost cradling cradling it like a little angel, that little like packet. And then <laughs> I also love your drawing of the little sauce bottles. Awesome! Thank you, so much. Thank you. Hi, Izzy. <laughs> I just saw your. Hi, Sonika. Hi. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you too. And I loved your workshop. Um, I will be really quick. The first food that I remember making was cheese quesadillas when I was like in elementary school. So it starts off with plate. Oh, first it's all blurry. Cheese. Oh, no. Is I that can't better? See. If I... Yes, that's better for me. I'm not sure. Yes, I can see it now. Okay, Please continue. Yeah. <laughs> so it it says plate, tortilla, cheese, and then patience. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny! I love the cheese, the mania in the cheese panel. <laughs> it was the cheese. It was all about the cheese. Honestly, is it is <laughs> as a third grader or like just a vehicle for eating more cheese? <laughs> I love your lettering so much and I don't know how you got it to like look so blurry in the pencil drawing and distressed and I, I love that as like an ingredients list and patience being one of them that's so good <laughs> thanks Izzy. thank you all right uh, uh we'll go to Leslie next and then egg here we go Yay. hi <laughs> oops okay this is all I've got here. So is this going to work? Yeah, we can see it. It's not backwards or anything? Okay. <laughs> okay, so this was an answer to what is the first meal you made? So this is my empty apartment when I was like 19. Nothing in there whatsoever except a fridge and a sink. And uh, it says, yeah, that's it. That's what it says, an counter. Um, so here I am with my first bag of groceries. I went shopping and I brought home like just tortillas and cheese. So I'm in this whole empty room on the floor and I just got a, one bag of groceries. So I go to the uh, skillet, I mean, excuse me, to the counter. And I've got, I found out that there's a, a bottle of oil that was left by the last renter. And I'm like, oh, no problem. So I stick the tortilla in the pan and uh, use the oil. And I'm hearing my sister in my head that's always saying, like, she was saying, um, all you have to do, Leslie, to cook is just get a tortilla, put it in the pan, put some cheese on it. So that's what I did. And this is what I ate for about, I, I said about 415 days and, uh -huh. not, and never got tired of it. And this one, I think I would probably leave out, which is just me saying, oh, this is where I didn't understand what a skillet was. But the very, very end, whoops, let me make this straight. Very, very end, I've never gotten tired of it. Loved it every time. But I think I would choose to leave that out and just end with the calendar. And this is what I ate for 450 days and nights in a row. <laughs> I like it with the... Um, with the last one because okay. I think that it almost like I like the rhythm to it this is what I ate and then and I loved it I don't know I I, I think it's uh -huh. it's really cool um I also love the way you organized it almost it looks like 
Like, I love the experimental panels, but also it feels like windows popping in. Mm, thank you. Um, and, like, I just, I like that rhythm that's set up. Thanks very um, much. I also like that you said, this, so bold. Yeah. Um, like, I it I can, like, hear it in your voice and your thank emphasis. You. I made it bigger and bigger. I kept whiting it out and making it bigger and bigger. <laughs> I love that. And your character looks so happy and at oh, peace. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so content. It's so yeah. sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, These are so cool. We've got to hang next. Here we go. Hi. This Hi. was fun. Um, so I did like a little comic about um when I first moved into my apartment. So... Um, my mom was a really angry woman and she was really particular about her kitchen. And mm -hmm. so um, this is kind of like her shadowy, shadowy figure kind of lurking in the kitchen saying, don't come inside my kitchen. And so um, once I moved out and mm -hmm. this is all my kind of like my clothes packing, oop, yeah, my dog's <laughs> um, and me cooking. <laughs> um, and I think when I moved out, one of the things I was most excited for was to have a kitchen of my own and so my very first meal in my new apartment was um frozen pizza and oh, so yeah. it wasn't the best meal in the world it was really special to me because it was uh the first time I could cook in my own kitchen so this is me in my new apartment with my frozen pizza wow oh my god that's amazing I I would really love to like if you ever decide to expand this into like longer moments I would really love to read that that and also like I love that you made that final panel long so like we spend more time on it than the shorter panels and like again you feel that sense of like relaxation like almost like exhaling and that's so beautiful I also think it's good luck to have pizza I mean a lot of people do this but I, I just think that it's good luck to have pizza as your first meal in an apartment <laughs> I don't know if it's real, but <laughs> I think so too. Thank you again. This has been so much fun. Awesome. I'm so glad. <laughs> we'll go to Ellen next. Thanks, Ang. There we go. Um, there we go. Hi. So Hi. Uh, I didn't get very far. So this is the food that I hope I never, I will never eat again. Um, can you see it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. the one time the one time I didn't use my Italian dictionary and I ordered manza in Italy, arugula piled on raw beef. I ate it to be polite. Wow. It's so gross. And then the other um thing is the thing non-food I'd like to eat, the inside of a pine tree looks like shredded chicken. And I wish I could eat it. That's, That's it. So unique. That's I it. also love the rhythm in which you write. Like, I I love like it almost felt like a haiku, um, when you were reading it, <laughs> and then the ate it to be polite. That's it, it. was so punchy, and the illustration was gorgeous. And I've never thought about pine that way, but <laughs> I can like totally see it. Like it's kind of crumbly and flaky, but it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. We've we'll got a Sarah. Can I share my screen? I did it digitally. Um, yes, we have to. We normally allow that once or twice. Uh, okay, go ahead. You should be able to do that. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, I made a comic uh, about... Uh, I heard first time making food for yourself, and I was like, well, I cooked a lot as a kid, but not. I always did it for other people. So this is when I moved out, and I had a meal plan in college. But I was really craving soup, so I asked my mom for my grandma's soup recipe, and I went to the store, and I called her a million times because I hadn't cooked chicken on my own before, uh, and it turned out pretty good. I had to borrow a stock pot from someone else in my dorm, uh, but it turned out good. Oh, wow. So here's awesome. that. Good. It's always good to be like coached on the phone with someone yeah. who knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's a very easy recipe. You just throw everything in the pot and make matzo balls. But it was, I even now I don't really cook meat very much. So it was a big jump to buy it for the first time. Yeah. Um, awesome. I really love your limited color palette. 
And I also really love your handwriting. Thank you. But the story is so sweet. Thanks. Thank you. It does feel like home. This art style does feel like home. It's so like accessible. All right. Thanks, Sarah. We'll go to Judith okay. next. Um, Hi. Um, I just, I ended up not drawing too much. I was thinking so much and watching what people were saying. But um, the story you told about the the piece you shared about the kind of, what did you call it? Food vengeance or something like that? Someone reminds, else called it food vengeance. That was a Somebody great called phrase. it that. Anyway, <laughs> I have a friend here whose mother is an extremely famous cookbook writer. And I was talking to her and I was saying to her, you know, what is it like? Do you like your mom's cooking? And she told me with great pride, well, I only eat raw. <laughs> and I thought to myself, she, she didn't have any sense at all of this being any rebellion on her part or anything like that. Right. And as a mother of grown children, I felt like I could see the mother's point of view too, feeling kind of annoyed. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? So awesome. Thanks, Judith. Thanks for the and, yeah, and I would be the really what you said about what we ate for dinner. I tonight I'm not Hello? supposed I had an entire pint of uh Ben and Jerry's that I didn't share with anybody. That's so great. that was my dinner. Oh no. Well, That's excellent. Tomorrow's <laughs> another day. Right. Thanks, Judith. All right, we'll go to Christian fast and we'll try and get to our last couple. Is that all right, Seneca? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally okay with okay. how much ever time you need. I'm sorry that I didn't. All right. Hello. Hi, Kristen. Let's see. A little out of focus. What's yep. going on? The character looks cool. Basically, this is my character. I'm making, basically, we're up a station of what I'm doing, making eggs. Nice. Could you read it? Because it's blurry to me. Okay. Ah, uh, fresh children. Uh, you can read it yourself. So. Can you see? No. Is it bird cook cooking eggs? It looks like a bird cook cooking eggs. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's so. That's so wild. Yeah, mm. I like that. An unsettling thought, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, can I read it for you? Sure. I'll play this. If you want to, yeah. Ah, breast meat with my children. Well, what's left left of my children, that is. <laughs> they ate their kids. <laughs> yeah, he's a cannibal. Thanks. That's really... <laughs> Thanks, Chris. We're going to go to Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie That's funny. And then Aditi and then Andre. I think we can fit people. Maybe you coming on screen? I'm trying. Hold on. Hold on. Boy. Hold there on. we go. Here we go. Here we go. I know if you have some kind of funky background on, you can't sh show anything. So here we go. Uh, I'm sorry I've been gone for so long, but who gives a shit? All right. Here we go. This deviled egg. Okay. This is the meal I would never want to get. And I remember going to a party and this was all they had to eat. And I was like, dear God in heaven, deviled eggs were given the right name because to me, they are the food from hell. <laughs> okay, forget deviled eggs. We hate that. Uh, object I wish I was, ed was edible. Uh, since I'm always wearing one and since they probably have hardly any calories, I think I'd like to eat my hat. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I know we're pressed for time, Tom. I'm so happy to be back, be back here, Tom. It's been a very difficult couple months. But anyway, here we go. Delicious gingerbread men from Mom's Recipe. I love eating them so much that I would eat everyone else's when they were asleep in the night. And I would steal them out of the freezer and they'd be like, didn't I have seven gingerbread men last night? I'd be like, no, no, you were mistaken. <laughs> and they'd only have like two left. Love to eat them. Hate to make them. And then the <laughs> last one Oh, this one, I start out with this. Oh, yeah, like I made an omelet for the first time. No, you didn't, you liar. So what I did, my mom used to make pancakes all the time. And I was like, oh, they're just not quite right. So I would be like, they need something else. And I saw some kind uh -uh. of show where they had corn, fr they, corn fritters. I go, mom, I need corn fritters, like right now. And she go, she like grabbed the Jolly Green Giant. I tried to do him, the Green Giant. 
the the it was like creamed corn, like disgusting, right? <laughs> She goes and puts it in the fritter and I become obsessed with the fritters. The whole family is disgusted because now I keep trying to drop corn into their pancakes and they're like, ew, stop it. Like, and to the point that when pancake Saturday would happen, they would be like, Jamie didn't touch it, did she? Because I don't want any corn in my pancake. And I was like, but it's a fritter now. It's a fritter. All right, that's all I have. Thank you for having me. This was so great. I love food. And I love oh my God. Uh, I love song. I I'm love obsessed. You. I your drawings are so alive. I could like feel your energy coming out of them. Um, it's I'm I hungry. love this page. <laughs> Cuz how can I be this fat and still be hungry? I'm going to go get some food as soon as this is over, but this was wonderful. Thank you so much. Peace out. I'm done. Thank you. Love you all. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we're gonna Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, the food that I hate and I'm okay with never eating is uh bottle gourd sabzi is oh like gravy. God. And I hate it so much because I've had it cold when I was in school, and this is the reason why I hate yellow and green together. I just cannot stand it. And the food that I am not allowed to eat, but I want to eat is my cat. <laughs> A cat. Uh, <laughs> uh, and this is the food oh and the sentence i uh, just said ew because ew <laughs> um and this is the food that i love to eat but i hate to make it says i love you but not enough to birth you <laughs> and um this is the comic it's maggie uh instant noodles that's the first thing that came to my mind and there was this ad on TV for Maggie. It was like, I'm Maggie, quickly made, nicely dressed in yellow and red. <laughs> Tear the packet, <sighs> empty in the pan. Water is boiling hot when. As like the whole thing, you can YouTube it maybe. <laughs> and I always forget when to put the noodles in. It's like, do I put it with the water when it's boiling or after it's done boiling? But that's the song I use as a reference. You put it after the water is boiled. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's, yeah, but that took longer than two minutes. It says two minutes noodles, but it took longer than two minutes. And what? that's my comic. Yes. So okay. impressed <laughs> that you like translated the ad and still managed to make it rhyme. And still also in my head. <laughs> you <laughs> the like color palette from the noodle packet on in the yeah. illustration. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I love your comic. But yeah. I love this. Thank awesome. you so much. <laughs> I'll go to Andrea next. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I only have time for one because when I uh, work on food, I go crazy with color. So I kind of just had to, uh, went to town with the markers so much. I only had time for one. But this is uh, the food that I love to eat, don't like to make. Uh, Nashville hot chicken. Love to eat it, but it's messy to cook and eat. So given the choice, I'd rather eat. <laughs> um, and then this uh, call out down here is a uh, napkin completely unmatched because <laughs> like, the, the sauce and the oil and the everything just like gets all over, you know, whatever when you're eating it. <laughs> I love how like again so visceral like I love that it, it's like not it's barely held and like you can see all the ingredients in it even though it's like supposed to be fully contained and that's how you know it's good you know <laughs> fully loaded it's so beautiful this is that such is a what I love page <laughs> thanks Andrea thanks so much thanks awesome we'll go to Michelle and we'll finish up with Danya here we go hello you're currently on my phone so um I had time to do the other ones, but I'm most proud of this one. Uh, when you said, um, what is the first thing you remember making to eat? Uh, it wasn't a full meal, but I made this in elementary. And it was just whole, like, I love, like, tomatoes and cheese. So my brain was like, why don't we, like, put them together in the microwave? And then that was my after school snack for, like, so long in elementary. But, um... Yeah, I'm just super proud of this. It's been a while since I've drawn, so it was it was nice to be here. Thanks for everything. It's really beautiful. I like that the the main the final dish like gets center stage and takes up like the whole background and the whole page and everything like covers its panels. 
I love that design. And also, I feel like it's like almost pizza, like cheese and tomato, Yeah, you yeah. know? I could definitely Yeah, see. it's really good. All right, our last one will be Donya. Let's see if they're there. Here we go. Hi. Hi. I'm Donya. I'm from Iran. And oh, cool. for my bad English, I wanted to pronounce it sofre. And in the first And okay, thank you. I'm sorry for my bad pronunciation. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's okay. <laughs> I want to show my comic. Um, here's the food I hate. You can see it's Kashka Badam John. It has uh, eggplants in it, and I hate it. And here's my mom trying to feed it to me. <laughs> and uh, that's my color pencils. I love to try them and eat. <laughs> Um, I don't know why it's so weird, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I hate everything I make. I make honestly, and I cook, uh, because I can smell the, smell it bad. So I love everything that people make for me. Mm -hmm. And here's the I don't know how to show it. Here's the four panel comic of ruined eggs that I. Uh -huh. May. I don't know if you can see it. Could you read it? Can you read uh, it? Ah yes. Um, here's me calling my mom. Mom, mom, I made a food, and here's me presenting it, and it smells like death. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is uh, saying to me that um, uh, it's so good that I don't want to eat it. Eat it yourself. <laughs> and I'm telling her with, with, with the fire in my eyes that <laughs> don't worry, I will make more. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. I, I love that your eyes stay small as you're going. And then they get so big when you're like showing the eggs and then they get bigger with the <laughs> fire. Like I, I love the rhythm of that. That's Thank so you. cool. <laughs> Thanks yeah, so I love that. And also, yeah, thanks for thanks for letting me know because I I love that comic so much and I want to I want to use it in future workshops, but I I saw like three different um <clears throat> ways to pronounce the word and I I'm sure they're all wrong because the website was sketchy. So like this is great. Thank you, Safre. Thank it. you. <laughs> okay. Sanika, thank you. Oh my gosh, food, it connects the whole world, doesn't it? What what a what a, like an epic journey we've been on today from things that we didn't want to eat, these things that we want to eat but can't make, to the first things we make. Oh my gosh. You just Thanks you so, so much for having me and for like getting into it. I really love that. And I feel like I got so inspired and excited, you know, to like make more food comics because of y'all. <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to put in the chat one last time where you can, uh, everybody can upload one of today's images if you want to be included in the PDF. Also, yeah. how to tag uh, the, Jack the Jackfruit Slayer in Instagram. Can I and share my screen one more time? Sure, please, of course. Um, so I just had a little, um, oh, sorry, ignore all this. Let me just go to the page uh, that I wanted to go to. So if y'all are going to be in New York um, for MOCA, which is 16th and 17th March, um, I'll be tabling. And this is the new new version of an old comic that I'll be um, tabling there. I'll be at table 155, just in case. Um, yeah. And then this is website, Instagram. I would love to follow y'all back and see your comics. Can you go back to that, that comic? Is it super thin or is it thick? I'm only looking at it from the top, so I can't tell. It's how. actually, it's a box. Hang on. I've been making them at my desk, so I have them. But they're like tarot boxes. Oh, it looks super And then the, the comic is like, I don't know if y'all are, ooh, wait, I'm like excited about this. So they're like little cards and the every card's like the, it initially, when it was like, it first appeared in the New Yorker, it was like just the panel. But like, if you, now I added like answers. So it's called questions my tarot cards refuse to answer. But then I added like little affirmation answers um, in the back of all of them that are 
together sort of tell a big story. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited about it because it's a different version of it. <laughs> Well, we'll be there at Mocha too, so we'll get to Yay! say hello. Oh my God, I'm so excited to see you. Uh, what table are you going to be at? I forget. I, I'm usually pretty bad at that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I forget, but um, but I'll send you an email and we'll figure it out. Yes. And, but, and it, Mocha's pretty small and we'll, yeah. we'll be able to find each other. And if you take Venmo, we'll grab a copy. Yay. Okay, yes, I will. I don't I don't use a card reader. I can never figure it out. <laughs> so I Work either. All right. I'm going to ask everyone to um, unmute themselves and give you a round of applause. Thank you so much for guiding us through these food comments. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> so, so nice. You at Mocha. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all the dogs. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Everybody have a great dinner. Thanks, Andrew. Cream drive beer. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.